Hello and welcome to the Health Bridge podcast. I'm your host, Holly B. Today I'm introducing you to Jenna Hasty. She is an internationally recognized autoimmune and chronic illness root cause specialist, as well as a coach and best selling author on this subject. Her personal journey began back in 2012 in the midst of her nursing career when she began having mystery symptoms fatigue, brain fog, lethargy migraines. Despite seeking answers from her doctors, they were all just dismissive of her concerns and attributed them to just the challenges of motherhood on top of having a career. A few years later, she finally received a diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. A few years after the initial diagnoses, she also received a diagnosis of autoimmune arthritis. Jenna's journey of self-healing merged her extensive medical knowledge with new knowledge on neuroscience, ancient wisdom, and spiritual practices. The resulting 3D healing method led her into remission, medication-free and pain-free, and it defied the expectations of a chronic and progressive autoimmune disease. Her 3D healing method is rooted in the understanding of limiting beliefs, of nutritional deficiencies, chronic stress, and the soul's dimensions. Jenna just has such a powerful story, one of getting all the way to rock bottom, almost ending it all, but she held on to hope. If you're diagnosed with a chronic health condition, and you believe that this is a life sentence, Jenna and I want to give you hope that you can see it as something other than that, that you can experience it as something other than that, and that perhaps you can even stop experiencing it altogether as you move through a healing journey. Now let's dive into this episode with Jenna Hasty. Jenna, welcome to the Health Bridge podcast. I am really excited to dive into your story, your healing methods today. I talk a lot about mindset and shifting how we perceive life, how we move through life and experience things all by changing our mind if we need to. And I think that this conversation is really going to compound very well on my last episode that I did with Jenny Harkle Road, where we were talking a lot about um, neuroscience and brain retraining. And I'm really excited to dive into that topic with you because that's been a big part of your journey. And so I guess I'd like to start with how, and your story will come through this question, I think. How did you start learning about brain retraining, about neuroscience? Where did that come into your journey? Did you know about it prior to getting sick or did you dive in when you didn't know what else to do? Yeah, the latter for sure. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Holly. So it was definitely the the latter. Uh, I actually worked as a registered nurse uh, for 15 years. So it was all kind of a e based and things like that. And neuroscience just wasn't on, on my radar. In 2020, I hit rock bottom and I was shielding and I was bedridden. I am um, facing the loss of my nursing career, my half finished master's as well, because I was in the middle of doing my master's in advanced practice. Um, I lost lots of friends at the time. I lost my health. I was told that if I went outside and caught COVID, I would die. Um, So I felt really pretty much at the depths of despair. I had tried every medical avenue and um, I was feeling really suicidal at the time. And if it wasn't for my daughters and my husband, I don't think I would be here today. They gave me that little bit of an extra push to try and look outside the box for answers. Um, whilst being bedridden, I was scrolling and researching and learning and I came across Joe Dispenza, who was the catalyst of, of it all, of me getting a, a bit of hope. Um, and so I just started looking at different um, principles, uh, different ways to rewire my brain while I was in bed and 
I didn't really think that it's possible, to be honest with you, but I had no other hope, if that makes sense. Um, and that's basically where my journey started with uh, with neuroscience. Yeah, retraining my brain. Joe Dispenza is a big one, and he's definitely come up in multiple conversations that I've had. I have read his book is called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And I was already aware and interested in that whole topic. And then he really dives into the science of it, which is just fascinating because it does sound really woo-woo. Yeah. uh It sounds very ethereal and heady and like, oh, Mm -hmm. you know, energy driven. But it's like, no, this is actually rooted in science. Yeah. I think eventually, though, quite a lot of the woo-woo stuff will eventually come out as being true once science has proven it. Do you know? Everything is in everything is energy. Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Expand on that. Everything is energy. Like, when did you really start to embrace that? Because you came from a Western medicine practice and we're very passionate about it. And so Mm -hmm. did you already feel like you had, were you already open to the idea of energy or Again, is that something that came out of desperation? A wee bit of both. I would say when I was younger, I definitely was more open to these kind of concepts. And I would have conversations about seeing orders and things like that. And I got kind of shut down and told, don't be you're talking nonsense and all of that kind of just got packaged away and forgotten about. Um, and when I was at rock bottom, I actually went through a spiritual awakening. That's all I can um, really explain it as. I realised that um, there was more to life and that there was something bigger than me. Um, And just through even researching and reading things about quantum physics and things like that as well, everything is energy. Our thoughts are energy, your energy, I'm energy, this chair's energy. Just absolutely everything is made up of buzzing particles. And it's incredible. There is no actual solid matter, which is mind-boggling. It's actually mind-boggling. But if you brought uh, your hand underneath a a really good microscope, you could really see those atoms buzzing, which is just incredible. It's a really fascinating, beautiful concept. And to me, that does prove higher power. That proves divine nature. (laughs) Like, this isn't an accident. No, no. It's all very orchestrated for sure. So yeah. How, tell me a little bit more about your spiritual awakening, because I think a lot of people might be able to relate to that, or maybe they feel like they're missing something. Like I know for me and my journey, I'm, I was in a very kind of depressive state. I just didn't have much hope for my life. I didn't feel good. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And I realized at that point that I was missing a connection to something greater. And that's when I dove into spirituality, found a spiritual mentor. That's where I started really learning about mindset and how to Mm -hmm. captivate the thoughts of my mind, so to speak. So yeah, I'd love to hear more about your story there and, and how that started moving into your life. Yeah, so I was just trying different techniques to calm my thoughts and to also uh, try and dampen the pain that I was in. I was in 24 hour pain in bed. Anytime I moved, it was in agony. So I actually started meditating because I had read that this could help with kind of pain management and things. And it was through my meditations that I just it's very difficult to explain it's like having these kind of downloads like thoughts that came into my head to tell me what I should be doing with my health and what I should be trying and what I should be doing to get out of bed and it was like we stepping stones every time I meditated it would be try visualization so that was a big massive thing for me um, and then I would get wee nudges to drop certain medications and do it certain ways and to incorporate different things. And um, that wasn't coming from me. It, it was coming from out of me, um, which is very surreal and very strange to see. And other people might be thinking that I just uh, it's just a load of nonsense, you know, unless you've experienced something like similar to that. Um, but it was a very, very profound experience. Um, and if it wasn't for that kind of catalyst, again, I wouldn't be here today. 
Um, and it's just incredible. Amazing. And so, again, you felt like that was coming from outside of you, messages that were being given to you. But it was because you were willing to open up yourself to that possibility that those messages, that you were able to hear those messages, I think. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. I had nothing left to I suppose I had nothing left to to try or to do and I just was surrendering, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was even just thinking back to it, it was very surreal, very surreal experience. Very lonely experience as well though. And why do you say that? Because you sound like you're talking crazy talk to people do you know just maybe a wee bit grateful that it happened during covid and it was lockdown because if i was saying this kind of stuff to my parents i think my parents would be worried about me so and isn't that one of the gifts from covid is that we all were forced into this reflection period yeah you know? and everybody had a different experience with that some positive some negative but for you it gave you that space to open up and be quiet and be with yourself. And so as not to have judgment around that. And you were able to really dive in, which is amazing. You were diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, and autoimmune arthritis. And you were essentially in debilitating pain. I was on copious amounts of medication um, for the axial spondyloarthritis, which is the autoimmune arthritis. Um, I was having to inject myself with low-dose chemotherapy methotrexate every week. Um, I also had to inject myself with adalimumab, which is a biological agent. And I was also taking sulfasalazine tablets. So they're all immunosuppressants. And with that kind of concoction of immunosuppressants, I was neutropenics. I had no immune system. And that's why I would have been so susceptible. But with the pain that I was in, and I was dealing with a lot of anxiety, as you would be, I was dealing with depressive thoughts and things as well. I was on medications for pain. I was on medications for my mood, for my mental health. I was on medications for side effects. So I was taking on average 15 to 20 tablets per day, as well as the immunosuppressants that I was taking, which is just obscene it's a crazy amount and the majority of the the medications were actually to counteract side effects which is just mind-blowing you know it's like take this for this pain but this is going to cause your bills to get really upset or your stomach to get upset and you need to take x y and z for that but just it's just it's crazy but it was it was horrible 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 time I can only imagine and I talked to so many women that are going through this, their own incredible autoimmune experiences with symptoms on top of symptoms on top of symptoms, and they keep collecting diagnoses one on top of another. And I want to give them hope that there is more that can still be done, and it doesn't have to all come from Western medicine. Western medicine can certainly help It depends on your own experience, but there are so many other ways of also coming at the same issue. And you've come up with 3D healing method, which encompasses multiple different techniques, neuroscience, medical knowledge, because that is your initial background, uh, ancient wisdom and spiritual practices. I'd love for you to speak directly to those women that are in the depths of it and can't see a way out like you were yeah so did you know that there's like about 80 percent of the women population have autoimmune compared to to men the, the whole population of autoimmune disorders 80 percent are women um, and we're more likely to have chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and things um, and the reason that i see it as is that we are born people pleasers we're made to put our needs last we're juggling all the hats we are basically at the bottom of the pile we have an empty cup and we're still trying to fill the cup of others and that's something that society's put on us 
as females that we should be the caregivers and um, it's been to the detriment of our health 100%. Um, so the 3D healing method is mind-body-soul healing um, and you need to begin with the mind and you need to have a very strong, solid foundation. So I would be asking these ladies, how are you speaking to yourself? How are you treating yourself? Are you associating with these labels? Are you saying my autoimmune disease or these my symptoms, my anxiety symptoms? When you're putting these labels on yourself, you are speaking to your subconscious mind and you're just shining a light on the negatives. You'd be looking at your limiting beliefs as well. I mean, what limiting beliefs have you got when we're children up to the age of about eight? We don't actually have a conscious brain. Our conscious brain is still developing. So absolutely everything that we see and experience up until that age, all of our formative years goes right into the subconscious and that becomes black and white and that becomes your belief systems. So it's trying to counteract these belief systems that are holding you back as well. So once you've created a stronger foundation within your mindset, you'd be looking at childhood wounds as well. Have you got a wee box of unprocessed emotions that are sitting at the back there because something was too difficult to go through? Have you just pushed that aside? Because as we were saying earlier on, everything is energy. Even the emotions are energy, they're energy and motion. So if you don't process them, they lay stagnant and eventually your body starts screaming and that's where all these mystery symptoms come in. So we look at processing past childhood events and when I say childhood wounds, not everybody has had a bad childhood but you will still have childhood wounds. You've maybe been picked on at school, you've maybe never got invited to the certain birthday parties and these things will seem very trivial to your adult brain but little you was really affected by it and that stayed with you and that has just dimmed your light a wee bit and through future events you might come into a situation that will just make that kind of emotion raise its head maybe you didn't get invited to your colleague's wedding and then there you are you're feeling that you're left out again and you're you're not good enough and whatnot. So it's really dealing with that sort of stuff. And then also processing trauma as well. And now trauma isn't always a catastrophic event. It can be layers upon layers of stress. The modern world is so stressful and that can cause trauma in itself as well. So once you've worked on the mind, we would then move on to the body. And when we're looking at the body, you're looking at nutrition the saying is true, you are what you eat. So you'd be looking at doing an elimination diet and you want to cut out corn, dairy, gluten. If you've got an autoimmune condition, you should be cutting that out for at least six months. Um, and saturated fats and also white sugars. So you would do an elimination diet for three weeks. You take everything out and then you reintroduce things one at a time. But as I said, if you're celiac, you're not going to be eating the gluten at all. And if you've got autoimmune condition, you would literally just hold off for six months. Um, and then you move on to healing your gut because the immune system, about 70 to 80 percent of the immune system resides just below the gut lining. Um, and we can develop things like leaky gut syndrome where the cells in the gut lining become slack and the outside world, the food that we eat, can go through these gaps and they can penetrate into the immune system, which then makes the immune system go rogue. So you'd be looking at healing that. And then we look at adrenal fatigue. And we also look at nervous system regulation with kind of somatic practices and things as well. Um, and then with the soul, it's finding out who you are. Very little of us in this day and age know who we are at the core. We will maybe say, what your name is, that you're maybe a mum or what you work as, but you're not actually really discussing your true essence of who you are. You're saying all these doing words and uh, you just lose track of who you are, especially as a mum. I feel that if you, you become a parent, you lose track of yourself or when you go through menopause as well, 
it's a time where we lose our identity and things. So it's really bringing yourself back and finding out who you are at the core and loving you. And it's a lot of self-love. Um, and then we're looking at kind of energy healing with like chakra realignment and um, practices like Reiki and things like that are really helpful as well. And then obviously your meditation. Meditation is like the chef's kiss. You know, that's um, a, a morning and night thing that you should be doing and looking at uh, daily routines and rituals, just what you're going to do in the morning to set you up for the day and what can you do at night to set yourself up for a good night's sleep as well is so important. So that is the 3D healing method in a, in a nutshell. Yeah, that's just so incredibly helpful because that gives people an overview of steps that they can take really actionable steps that aren't incredibly overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the really important things and what I always go back to is creating self-care practices that are simplified rather than just feel like they're compounding on top of everything that's already on yeah. your shoulders. So like, how can we simplify things? Yeah. I think when it comes to nutrition, doing the elimination is so important and I think the word elimination can trigger people thinking like, yeah. oh, this is too much for me to think about. But I like to say, you know, actually, we're simplifying things. You're simply taking, you're removing things. That's actually yeah. simplifying the process. So again, it's all those little subtle mindset shifts around the actions that we're taking to create these self-care practices. And that's why it's important though for the mind to be a solid foundation first before you move on to all these other steps. And I think that there's quite a lot of people that go, oh, but I've tried the nutrition, I've tried healing my gut, I've tried elimination diets, but have they actually done the mindset work first? Because if they're not, they're never going to succeed with that. I agree. Yeah, that's where I start as well with my clients is we always start with mindset because for me, that's where I was that person. I was doing all the other things I was a trained herbalist. I was shoving as many plants down <laughs> into my body as I could. And it wasn't, it was helping, but it wasn't getting to the roots, right? And when I finally dove into spirituality and then that in turn taught me mindset and taught me how to shift my thoughts, that's really where everything started to change. And I started opening doors that I thought were locked to me. Ideas for my future, like that I was capable of different careers, that I was capable of all these other things. I could be capable of feeling better than I do now. All of those thoughts that I had had before really felt factual and realistic. I have chronic fatigue syndrome. I have yeah. lupus. I, I don't have any experience in this sort of career. Therefore, I can't apply for that job. I would always go back to these factual things that felt like solid. It's mind. just a it, fixed mindset though, is not it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it took so long for me to understand that. It's kind of trying to zoom out because you're in the thick of it. Do you know, if you're experiencing it right now, you're right in the thick of it. But if you just try and pull yourself back and look at it with a kind of bird's eye view, if that makes sense, it just makes things a wee bit more manageable, I suppose, to see that there are different sides to the coin. I want to dive into this just a little bit more. So Drawing outwards, drawing to that high level is one thing when we are also starting to dive in and get deeper into looking at the root causes, like the childhood traumas, the childhood experiences, the things that happen to us from zero to eight years old can be really mind opening because you're like, oh, now I'm seeing like I'm, I'm putting the puzzle pieces together. Sometimes we can get really stuck in those past experiences and recognizing them. And we can kind of get stuck in the past versus like, how do we um, 
how do we what's the word I'm looking at? like transmute these things and alchemize them into moving forward can you speak to that process of recognizing the trauma realizing it was there and then moving that energy shifting that energy through the body so that it doesn't actually hold us back yeah it's shifting your perception on things so you need to really come to the choice of do I want my past experiences defining who I am or do I want to redefine how I perceive these past experiences and that's where the magic happens if you can change the way you view what has happened if that makes sense so we can essentially rewrite our story in the way we perceive these experiences yeah is that what you're saying yeah yeah um you know if you're forever gonna for instance for myself now that I look back on you know me hitting rock bottom me being bedridden losing my vocation I started nursing when I was 19 I'm 40 this year do you know it was like my whole adult life basically I was mourning over that I had a brilliant job lined up as an advanced nurse practitioner I felt like my future was set and then it all came crumbling down now I could be looking at that still and going I lost everything I've lost my whole identity my whole life whereas now when I look at it I see that these horrible things had to happen to create the person that I am today I wouldn't be the person I am today if I hadn't experienced all those things and it's very clear that from starting my nursing training right the way through getting diagnosed throughout the years because I started getting symptoms in 2011 when I was pregnant with my first daughter gathering up different diagnoses through the years, that was me kind of training for this moment. Does that make sense? But if I hadn't changed my perception on that experience, I would still be in victim mode and I would still be saying, woe is me, I've lost everything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want that situation to define me that way. Mm -hmm. So I changed my perception on it. And yeah. if I had to do it all again, I would do it all again. 100%. Yeah. percent. Yeah. Because I love well, the person that I am now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. Like I'm a, I'm a completely different person now that I've come through the other side and gone through the process. And it's been a 20 year journey for me. I've had to also go through a lot of that, those mental ups and downs, the physical ups and downs. And, and now it is so clear that there is a reason for all of that. When you're in the midst of it, that can be hard to see. To the people out there that are listening to this that are maybe being triggered when they hear us saying essentially that you're stuck in a victim consciousness, that you have to just change your perspective, that can feel, I think, when you're in the middle of it, very um, judgmental, maybe. That it's, yeah. I, this yeah. is all I your get, fault. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I do. I 100% get it. One of my oldest friends, when I was diagnosed with um, the autoimmune condition, she was very much, oh, I'm sure like there'll be like some holistic way that you can sort yourself. And I was still very much the nurse and very much no. And I was like, you don't get it. I'm going to need to be injecting myself forever with methotrexate. And God knows what else I'm going to need to take. So this was at the very beginning. And I was just like, how dare you say that? Do you know what? I felt very attacked. And I do. So I do. I sympathize and I get it. But at the end of the day, we are the only people who can control our realities. We are, the, if you don't like a situation that you're in, you need to do something about it. You need to make the effort to do it nobody's going to come and save you it's, it's on you and I think sometimes for me anyway I had to hit rock bottom to realize that now looking back if I had listened to my friend in 2019 a whole year before I hit rock bottom I might have been able to bypass that you know you, you just don't know but 
I felt, and I actually stopped talking to her for a very long time because I felt so hurt by it. And it's so ridiculous. Like me looking at that now, I just find it so ridiculous. But I had to hit rock bottom for me to see that, for me to realise that it was either I'm not going to be here anymore or I need to do something about it. They were my options. You just, you weren't ready for the message yet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Because I, I hope that somebody that's listening to that can accept that message and just know Very different that, that message to... is there. Yeah. That message is I'm there. I'm saying it with love. Uh, saying it yeah. with love. Yeah. And it's there for when you're ready. That doesn't mean you have to accept it yet, but just know that you've heard it. Take it into your heart and you can draw on that whenever you do feel ready to draw on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd love to know more about, do you bring in, I know you talked about somatics. How deep do you go with that? And then also how do you also incorporate other types of movement and exercise when you're working with clients? Because I assume that a lot of your clients also are coming from a pretty severe autoimmune background and movement exercise can be really difficult to incorporate into a routine, especially when you're in pain all the time. So I'm curious how you go about that, addressing that yeah. with your clients. So I, I don't do exercise classes with them or anything like that. Um, in regards to the somatics, I do trauma release with certain uh, different techniques. There's a gentleman called Peter Levine, and it's his 12 phases of trauma release that, that I go through with my clients. Um, but in regards to helping them with getting energy and to you know encourage them to start walking again, because that's probably the easiest thing to do whether it's around the house or outside I teach pacing and I teach them how to pace in a scientific approach and slowly but surely increasing the amount that you do and because I remember getting diagnosed with um, chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and the doctors were just like yeah you just need to pace just you know just listen to your body and that was it and it was like but what is that and how do you do that? And then you would end up being in that kind of boom and busted cycle where all of a sudden you had all this energy. And because you have all this energy, you think, I have got a to-do list the length of my arm, so I'm going to just do it all and get it done. And then, you know, the next day you're floored and you're floored for weeks, maybe even months, because you have expelled all that energy. So it's teaching that that's not the way to do things. And that you should just be, it doesn't matter how much energy you've got, you should just be still slowly increasing each day and doing the activity every single day. You find out your baseline, you do your baseline and work out a small percentage to increase it and you have your kind of targeted goals. And on your bad days, you still need to do the thing, but you're just not going to increase it. You just do your activity at the, the base level that you'd already set. Mm-hmm. And that really helps with increasing energy. Um, but no, I, I don't teach uh, like exercise or whatever. I, I do like doing yoga and things like that. And I suggest people to do that kind of stretching and whatnot. But I don't teach, don't teach that. Yeah. Now, that's really where I think is best to start. Because in, in my personal experience with chronic fatigue, I used to love working out. I loved going to the gym. I loved being fit. And... All of that was gone (laughs) once chronic fatigue set set in. And then I would start to feel better and I'd be like, all right, I'm going to start going back to the gym. And I would try to start right back in how I used to show up. And I could maintain that for one to two weeks, somewhere in that range. And then I would be down for the count for three to four weeks. And it was just yeah. that continuous cycle. And I finally had just given up. Like, I can't do this. And I'd be too afraid to go on. You know, I, I had friends that were very active and it'd always be inviting me on hikes or to do, you know, go on bike rides and stuff. And I just never did because I was too afraid of how it would 
affect my next several weeks if it was yeah. something that was too strenuous for me. So it was a really long time for me before I finally got something into my routine. And I started with 10 minutes of yoga, literally just 10 minutes of yoga from YouTube. And yeah. I slowly got that into a daily routine over the course of, I don't know, eight months, maybe a year. Finally, that was established in my daily routine. And then sometimes I would do maybe a 15 minute video, maybe a 20 minute video. And yeah. eventually that could work up. And sometimes I'd even do 45 minutes, but some days I'd wake up and now oh, today's a 10 minute day. And I just give myself the grace to experience that and to listen to my body rather than no, you did 45 minutes yesterday and vinyasas like we got to do it again today. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. And then you'd be floored. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I agree with that slow, slow approach. Yeah, and it, it takes time. Like it does take time and there's no point trying to sugarcoat anything. This is like a lifestyle intervention um, and it takes time and it takes consistency and you need to be persistent. Do you know, um, I was caught out a few times where I thought I'm so much better now I I'm brilliant I'm just not going to do that because I can't be bothered I'd rather just sit and watch Netflix and chill and I'm just not going to do my meditations or I'm not going to do my self-care go to bed I'll go to bed late and I would just end up going you know two steps backwards and it took a wee while for me to realize that oh hold on I'm not getting my old life back that is gone that life is gone and I'm okay with that now. I'm okay with that now. I'm happy where I am. And to be honest with you now, I continue with my lifestyle interventions, but I'm the healthiest I've ever been. I'm coming up for three years in full remission. So come May, I'll be three years in full remission. I take no medications. I'm pain-free. I'm symptom-free. I don't even see my rheumatologist anymore. I've been signed off because my blood work's been normal for such a long time. So it does, you know, it works and it's incredible, but it takes time and you need to be okay with taking time. You need to be the, you need to be the tortoise and not the hare. I've always identified with the tortoise. <laughs> I love that you brought that up, but I love that you also brought up that it's you, it's this transition and you finally realize you're not getting your old life back. Yeah. And that's also comes back to the mindset of acceptance of that. But also acceptance that moving forward, this is actually a better life for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happier. I've got more energy. There is no negatives here apart from if, you know, I can't sit up and munch 20 bags of popcorn while watching Netflix till like three in the morning. But like who really wants to do that anyway? Do you know? Maybe yeah. once in a while. Do you know? Moderation, I guess, but you know, like, no, I, I can do the workouts and I can do all that stuff now, you know, but it took time. It took, it took consistency and it took time. Um, but, you know, I, I couldn't even walk out to my driveway to begin with. So, of course, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of rebuilding. Um, and I think, you know, the, this is the new you. So that's the next hurdle once you've kind of, been, you know, snowballing and getting better. And then you do realize that, oh, hold on, this is my new identity now. And that's fine. And it's great. And it's perfect. It's more than fine. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because now you can actually show up. Yeah. You I'm not in bed anymore. Yeah. And I love sleeping, but I'm not in bed 24 7. Do you know? I get to watch my kids grow up. I get to play with my kids. I get to go outside and breathe fresh air. And walk my dog and do all the things whereas before I was just in bed in agony so so this is definitely a much more beautiful experience yeah. and how how did you see this affecting your kids and your husband like how did this affect your family life when you were in the midst of it and how has it transformed it as you've gone through this process yeah um, it wasn't a nice thing for them to witness Definitely not, because we had basically been scared into thinking that if I'd caught COVID, um, you know, I would die. So the girls were taken out of school early. 
So we took them out of school. Um, my husband was working from home. We weren't seeing anybody before lockdown really kind of happened and things. It was very much, you know, down the hatches and we're just keeping our wee unit together and, and that's it. As I was saying earlier on, I was very suicidal at one point. Um, but I couldn't put I couldn't tell that I couldn't tell Paddy that I couldn't tell my husband that because he was already doing everything. He was so supportive. He was looking after the kids. He was working. He was making sure we had a roof over our heads. He was cleaning. He was cooking. He was being mum. He was being dad. He was being everything for those girls. And I'll be forever grateful for him. He's like the glue that held it all together, do you know? Um, and my wee kids, yeah, it, it affected them. And my youngest has got um, emotional regulation issues because of it. Um, and she's actually waiting to have some trauma counselling at the moment as well um, because it really impacted her really badly. Um, so she was only five at the time, whereas um, my eldest was eight. So I guess if you remember what we were talking about with your subconscious and your conscious brain so everything would have been funneling right into my youngest subconscious whereas not so much with my eldest so I think that's why there's been a difference in how it's affected them both but now we are like the closest we've ever been um we sit around dinner table every night have dinner together as a family and we all say what we're grateful for and that's really helped with all of our mindsets. And definitely this kind of positive mindset has rubbed off on my kids and, and my husband. Um, and I'm just, we're, we're just so incredibly grateful to have each other. I would say it's definitely brought us closer. It's a blessing. Yeah, such a yeah. blessing. And it's great too that because you went through this whole process and understanding and learning about all the neuroscience and we were talking about earlier the zero through eight you know and how these small to large traumas and experiences can really affect us in our you know future adult lives you now have extra tools to help your children go through what you know was traumatic for them seeing their mother so sick and ill and so hopefully as she goes through the the trauma counseling and everything and with your support and your husband's support that will really ease the burden of those traumas right when we're not i think as adults when we don't do this work it's really easy to just perpetuate through generations these traumas that we've yeah. grown up with just because we don't know how to really become fully identif uh, like aware of them and identify these root causes. And then we don't know how to transmute them. Mm -hmm. So I think doing this work is just so incredibly important for future generations. And we don't need to wait till we get to the point of chronic illness to no, start this no. work, right? So yeah. I think with uh -huh. the work that you're doing with your clients, stuff that I'm doing, stuff that all these different practitioners are doing now, we'll start to slowly see the positive repercussions of doing this work as our children grow. Yeah, 100%. It's definitely this kind of work is the missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to health and wellness. I'm not against Western medicine at all. I know that a lot of coaches that are holistic can go down the route of don't go next to Western medicine. But for me... I still absolutely am so grateful for the NHS and for everything that it's done for me over the years. And I just know that there is a place for it, but we also need to find the root causes for things. We need to, to not be hiding the symptoms and just masking the symptoms with medication anymore. We need to do better. Mm -hmm. We do need to do better. And I agree with you. There's absolutely benefit to Western medicine. And I think ideally using both synergistically yeah. is the way to go. Sometimes we lean on one more than the other, depending on the situation. But coming from your Western medicine training, like, how do you think, because I know you also, I was reading some of your story and you're talking about basically being put off and 
been gaslit by your doctors for years when you would try to come to them about the um, symptoms that you were experiencing. Yeah. Like, how do we start uh, changing Western medicine a little bit (laughs) to become more open minded? I don't know if you have an answer to that. I'm just curious your thoughts on it. (laughs) I genuinely think with all the doctors that I've worked with as well, obviously I've worked in, I worked in accident emergency for for 10 years, um, for over 10 years. And then I moved into primary care. So I've worked with a multitude of different doctors and what my understanding is, it's a generational thing more than anything. And I feel that the younger generation of doctors are more open-minded and they're more um, willing to to look at kind of holistic treatments and as well. Um, and most certainly when I was getting gaslit, the majority of the doctors were of an older generation and it was a case of you're pregnant, so your back pain is because you're pregnant. And then I had the baby. Oh, it's just, it's still, you're just still lax. Years later, I've still got the back pain. Oh, just keep on taking the cocodamol. And then it was, my husband was working away. So you're just stressed. You're a young mother who's got two children and your husband works away. Of course, you're feeling like this. And that's what, what I was contending with rather than looking for reasons. It was just like, I wouldn't even get investigated. It was just very black and white. You've got two kids under five and you are running about working in A&E and your husband works away five days a week. No wonder. But I think that happens to a lot of women anyway. Like, I do genuinely think that women in general get gaslit a lot. Um, And that's something that needs to change as well. Totally agree. Yeah, I've heard stories upon stories. It's really sad. So I think, again, coming back to doing this mindset work, becoming more receptive to listening to your body and finding your baselines that helps us be able to communicate maybe better what is and stand in our truth of like this is not normal for me Mm. I need this investigated and so you know doing all this mindset work we strengthen our self-awareness and I think in doing so strengthen our our confidence to be able to stand up for ourselves better and I think it's time where we stop settling for we need to stop settling for the gaslighting And we need to start saying, okay, I need a second opinion and seeking it out. And just, we have to keep using our voice (laughs) in this arena, I think. And that's the only way things are going to change. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that kind of circles back again to the victim mentality. Because if your doctors keep on telling you've got a chronic and lifelong debilitating condition and there's nothing else that you can do, they are an authority figure. You're just going to believe what they see and then that's that's just you. That's the story of your life now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let's become our own authority figures. Mm-hmm. And then we can seek out experienced advice from others. But at the end yeah. of the day, we are our own authority figure. We have to be able to, I think, and this is where meditation can come in too, like be able to quiet the fear thoughts because there's so much fear and confusion when you're dealing with these health issues. We have to be able to quiet those down to the point where we can get underneath that and say, okay, what is my like inner self, my higher wisdom? Like, what is that saying? Mm -hmm. And just be able to get quiet and trust what comes up yeah 100 percent. i do that quite regularly now if i'm at crossroads with different things it's incredible what what can come up while you're meditating you get a lot of clarity this has been an amazing conversation is there anything that we haven't touched on yet or any last thoughts or things that you want to leave our listeners with I just 
want everybody to know that there's hope. Like, you know, you're suffering a bad day. It's just one day. You know, if if I had been successful in my darkest moments, I wouldn't be sat here with you right now. I wouldn't be getting to experience this beautiful life. It literally is night and day, and it can be for you too. And you just need to keep that hope and find that little fire that's within you, that little bit of strength, and just trust yourself and love yourself, and you'll get there. Where can people find you and contact you if they want to learn more about your program? Yeah, so I'm on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and all of the usual places. And it's Genology UK is my handle for all my social media. And my website is www.genology.co.uk. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for our conversation, Jenna, and I look forward to seeing how you continue to develop your practice and help more and more people around the world and just give them more hope, give them strength and help them heal. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Holly. It's been absolutely incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Jenna has such a great message of hope and transformation and the possibilities that are lying just on the other side of the depths, just on the other side of all of those challenges that you've been facing. And I want to know how that makes you feel. Are you triggered when you hear these messages of shift your mindset? Are you triggered when we talk about Let's look back to childhood. What programming have you been living your life with? If you're triggered, take that as an invitation to dive in just a little bit deeper. Just be open enough to considering whether or not this is something that you should look into a little bit further. I love Jenna's approach. Mindset changed everything for both of us. Getting out of our own heads, getting out of our own programming is what opened the door to our healing path. You can implement these other things that we teach about health, but without doing the mindset work behind it to support it, it won't be as effective. I really just want to reiterate that mindset is such an important part of your life journey, whether it's in health, relationships, wealth, financial security, business. Your success in all of it is based around mindset. So I invite you to reach out to Jenna, reach out to me. I would love to connect with you further. I would love to know where you are in your health journey, where you are in your mindset around your health journey. Let's see where we can start peeling back those layers of the onion and support you in your healing process. All of the information is listed below in the show notes to reach out to myself and or Jenna. Your healing, your highest and best quality of life is just around the corner. If you need help getting there, we are here to help you. I look forward to talking with you and seeing you on the next episode of the Health Bridge podcast.